huge attraction, literally, for racegoers, is this vast Citroen screen, situated in the centre of the track, to bring all the action to the people who've paid to come to the course. You can get the scenes in the paddock, the head-on replays, absolutely crucial, the race itself, the betting shows, the results, races from other meetings at times, everything that the punter at home accepts as normal can be given to those on the race course. Great sporting events around the world have it, like the Olympic Games, the Test Match Cricket, American football, and at last there are plans to bring it to race courses. Many more of them very soon will have these huge screens. Don't we all need them? And there's a horse I remember seeing. Well, if you were in the Middle East during the Gulf War and you saw one of these up above, you'd have got out the way pretty quick because this is a Scud. A Scud missile launcher. Would you believe it's part of a collection of Tony Budge, the well-known racehorse owner who built the new grandstand here at Doncaster. This is the control cabin. That's just, hello, can we come in? Now this is, hi Bob, this is Bob Fleming who looks after all these scuds. I mean, it's rather a strange collection, this Bob, for someone to save things like scuds. Yeah, it is, but uh, believe it or not, most scuds have now been destroyed. Yeah. All the scuds in Russia and the Warsaw Pact have been destroyed. Yeah. Um, there's one or two in museums, and that's it. And that's we were it. lucky to save these before they were scrapped as well. Well, come on, how does it work? You've got all these dials in here. How do you aim it at someone like, say, John McCrick, you know, who's about 400 yards away? Um, how would you do that? Do you press all the different buttons? Well, the first thing you have to do is find the actual coordinates, yeah. latitude and longitude, and they are fed in here. Yeah. On these particular dials, the information is fed into here. And then when you start the countdown, the information is fed through these cables, through into the missile, through the cables at the back of the missile, they're yeah. fed into the missile control. Yeah. And so the, uh, the controls inside the missile set themselves to the coordinates that have been set on this dial. And once you've set, do you stay here or what? The, or the you... commander will stay here until about five minutes before launch and then he'll leave. <laughs> he'll, go to a safe, yeah, he'll go to a safe distance, two or three miles away, I should think. Two or three miles? Oh, yes, yes. Jeez, boys. So what other things have you got? You've got scuds, what else? And where have you got your museum? Where about is that? Um, the collection at the moment is in Redford, yeah. in uh, North Nottinghamshire. And can people come along and see it? Not at the moment. We've, uh, we're just too, we're, we're, we're too busy and we're just full of material. And there's no, the there's no room for people to walk around. What have you got apart from the scuds? Um, we've got everything from a, a First World War artillery piece to the scud missile, going through all the Second World War tanks, artillery. Uh, chieftain, British chieftain tank, Russian T-55s, T-62s, yeah. um, a lot of very modern Russian equipment. And how much can, would a Scud cost these days? I mean, is it more expensive than a second-hand car or, or, or what? Um, the transport is. It's the transport's the most expensive problem. But we don't pay for these, we exchange these. But it's oh, the really? Transport. But if I wanted to buy some, I mean, how much they cost? Ten grand or something like that? Or? No, no. No, the problem is the transport. To yeah. actually bring these across costs about £25,000. Really? It, it, oh. The price is unbelievable. Expensive. Yes, and because you, you've got to bring them up. That's the control <laughs> panel that's just dropped a bit. <laughs> and they have to be brought through Poland by train and then by um, boat from Poland to the UK. And trying to get this through customs would be a bit of fun, wouldn't it? Yes, it is. Anything to declare, yeah. just once good missile. Yeah, right. Thanks, Bob. I'll leave you to direct it. Okay. Thanks very much. Thanks, bye-bye. How the North shook to Chicago, that brilliant win of Teleprompter. Now, how do you think the locals take to racing on the Sabbath? Well, no better man to answer that than the local um, Labour MP, Sir Harold Walker, for the last 28 years. So, Harold, how have your constituents taken to what's happening today? Well, it's interesting, John, because normally proposals before the House to change legislation related to Sunday trade triggers off a shoal of correspondence usually. On this occasion for this event, not a single representation, not a single object. So no one here at Doncaster at all? Well, look around at all these thousands of folk. My folk from Doncaster having a wonderful day out, they're obviously enjoying it. Now you must be very proud of the show that Doncaster's laid on today. Well, Doncaster always lay on a good show. It's a wonderful course and a wonderful town. We have a lot to offer, and these people who've come here today will see what we've got to offer, but then a lot of them are my folk locally who know the town and who know what we've got to offer here. Are you seeing this as a sort of showpiece to the nation of what Doncaster can offer? Well, I very much hope that that's the way that the viewers will see it, and of course those who are here today will know that. How much has this brought forward Sunday racing? I'm not quite sure that I can judge that, but I think that most MPs like myself are very ambivalent. We very much understand and appreciate the campaign to keep Sunday special. But I think many of them, like myself, distinguish between recreational activities on the Sunday and purely commercial activities. You know, when the good Lord decreed that on the seventh day we shall rest, I don't think he intended that we should lie in bed. 
Well, but that we should relax. I mean, what better way to relax than on an occasion like this? But do you think the good Lord sent MPs down from heaven to decide how we should spend our Sundays? Why shouldn't we bet your constituents here are enjoying themselves? They would like a bit. Why are you John, stopping them? John, John, I'm bound to say that, you know, MPs have to take account of their constituent views. I should balance in my mind the thousands of people who come here and join themselves today mm. with the many, many letters that I do receive on the other side of the issue. But aren't they interest groups? who write to you. The great majority want to be set free, well, not told what to do. Well, interest groups of different kinds. When I tell you that, for example, the major retailers, uh, in my, my assessment from my mail, as opposed to an extension of Sunday trading mm -hmm. as your ordinary churchgoer, because, of course, that would mean, as they see it, that they would have, with a limited retail market, mm -hmm. the expenses that currently confined to six days spread over seven with an increase in the whole, uh, their overheads. But they wouldn't be forced to open, would they? Ah, oh, very difficult for one individual to stand out when his competitors are mopping up the market. Now, you were Deputy Speaker of the House of Commons for nine years. You know the place better than almost anyone. If legislation is to be brought forward, we've had a new intake of MPs remembering the failure of the Shops Act in 86. What chances do you think it has well, of getting through the House? you're quite right to draw attention to this new and somewhat unpredictable factor, the, the new intake. I think also that people who have been participants in an event like today should realise that MPs do respond to the representations they receive and they've got to make sure that their voice is as vociferous as the others. Sir Harold Walker, thank you very much indeed. And all I can say to you, whatever side of the issue you're on, write to your MP like Sir Harold at the House of Commons, London, SW1A OAA, SW1A OAA, write to the House of Commons, write to your MP, tell him what you want, not what they want you to do. Gambling laws mean it's illegal to bet on Sunday, but some punters were able to place bets with credit accounts. The jockey club say it's part of their campaign to persuade the government to change the law. So, Peter McNerney went along to spend Sunday at the races. So, they were off for the first time on a British race course on Sunday. 23,000 cheered them on, a thousand more than the St Ledger. It was billed a family day. The basic £5 admission paid for the entertainments. It's illegal to charge for racing on Sunday. The brass bands were joined by pony racers, a private collection of Scud missiles, and racing's own rocket-propelled thoroughbred Red Rum. But there were no bookies. Gambling laws make it illegal on Sundays, security guards replacing the turf accountants. So, after each race, no queuing punters collecting winnings, only buying donuts. And with it being the Sabbath, a short service was held in the paddock. Even the priests thought the law should be changed. I think if people do their duty to God in the morning, I've had a service this morning. I'm here now and I have a service again at half past six this evening. Um, we can enjoy ourselves in between. So what would you say to those people in the church who would object to gambling on a Sunday? I forgive them and I hope they'll forgive me. A loophole meant it was possible to place a bet if you had a phone and credit or charge account with the tote or a bookmaker. Among those checking yeah. his bets, the head of Channel 4, Michael Grade. Yeah. Yeah. The region's MPs, including Barnsley's Eric Hillsley and Sheffield's Richard Caborn, supported Sunday racing, as did one closer to home. When the good Lord said that on the seventh day thou shalt rest, he didn't intend that we should all lie abed. I think that what he meant was get out and enjoy yourselves and relax, and that's what we're doing today. Thousands of, look at them, family occasion, people picnicking, children here, all having a whale of a time. Champion jockey Lester Piggott had time for just a few words. What do you think of racing on Sunday? It's a good idea. Go on, Brennan. The jockey who rode the first two winners spoke up for the stable workers. I, mean, I think there's going to be a few teething problems in the sense that I don't think you know stable lads and stable lasses can be required to work seven days a week. That's the hardest thing. And you know if they do get Sunday racing, then maybe they should look to the alternative thing of having a Monday off or something. But uh, this has got to come definitely. But he could only ride in the first three races. Nicknamed the Choir Boy, he'd promised his mother he'd be back for six o'clock mass. Meanwhile, the punters were looking forward to more Sunday meetings. Sunday you've got a full day to do, whatever you want, you come to the races, just have a family day out. I think it's a nice day out for all the family and I think you should be able to bet. Britain's top punter rejected suggestions it might be immoral to gamble on a Sunday. 
Oh, let the people decide. Your morals, my morals, have nothing to do with anyone else. If people want to bet, they will. And I think the crowds here are showing it. They want Sunday racing. Why should the Ever Ready Derby be on a Wednesday, for instance? Even the St Ledger here at Doncaster on a Saturday. Wouldn't it be wonderful if the four-day St Ledger meeting was Thursday through till Sunday? And Sunday was the fifth classic of the season, the St Ledger. Set the people free. They've made their voices. And look at the crowds. It's absolutely astonishing. When you look at them here, these people are voting with their feet they want to have racing on Sunday the meeting ended with a procession led by Desert Orchid meanwhile the book is aren't offering any odds on when and if the government will change the law well we didn't allow any betting on this competition either anyway here first